Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today, we're looking at the 20 most interesting easter eggs in Assassin's Creed games. So the cake was a lie? Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. 7 Samurai – Assassin's Creed Origins But whether we live or die, I am thankful for your help! Out in the desert in Uab Nome, you can find a deserted village blighted by a nearby gang of opportunistic bandits. It's up to Bayek to teach these villagers, the final seven farmers, to defend themselves and fight off the bandits for good. This is, of course, all a reference to the classic movie Seven Samurai, one of Akira Kurosawa's best. In the film, a similarly besieged village is ultimately rescued by the intervention of seven wandering samurai, or ronin, after the villagers convince them to help. Assassin's Creed subverts this a little, since we only have Bayek to teach people how to fight, and most of the village is dead. But it's still a fun side quest. Madras greedy Nekatia did. He will not be troubling the farmers anymore. The Mandalorian, Assassin's Creed Mirage. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. This is a blink and you'll miss it easter egg found early in Mirage. While Bassam trains in the Alamut, with its famous castle still under construction, he can briefly practice knife throwing. This is a tutorial for the knife throwing mechanic, which will be important for dispatching guards and solving puzzles. After Bossim shows off how much better he is at knife throwing than his fellow novice, he tells him, ah, You have inspired me to train harder. This is the way, Yasodik. You'll recognize this immediately as being a reference to the Mandalorian. It's fitting since the assassins follow their own strict code, much like the Mandalorians in Star Wars. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Indiana Jones, Assassin's Creed Origins. Why, Dr. Jones, whatever are you doing in such a nasty place? Why don't you come on down here? I'll show you. Thank you, my friend, but I think we are all very comfortable up here. Much of Raiders of the Lost Ark is set in Egypt. That's where Indy finds the map room that directs him to the Well of Souls, which is famously overrun with snakes, his worst fear. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Bayek clearly isn't afraid of snakes, but like all Assassin's Creed players, he does find them extremely annoying, hiding in pots and trying to jump scare him constantly. During the mission Curse of Wajet in Fayum, Bayek will again have to contend with a large number of snakes, which he'll complain about. They are breeding the snakes here. Gods, I hate snakes. Of course, you'll have to replay the first game to find out where the Ark of the Covenant really is, because it's certainly not in Egypt. The Ark is a source of unspeakable power, and it has to be researched. And it will be, I assure you, Dr. Brody. Sweeney Todd, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. An odd man indeed. He spent a fair amount of time in here, uh, poking around. Some people around town just seem to vanish. This one's pretty obvious, but if you didn't do all the dreadful crimes, you might have missed it. You'll eventually stumble across the crime, The Fiend of Fleet Street, in which you go, obviously, to Fleet Street and have to investigate why a detective has mysteriously gone missing. You'll quickly decide that Feeny Sod, the appropriately named Barber, is the culprit. But there's a twist. Sod is actually completely innocent, and it's the Tanner who's to blame. Rather than turning people into pies, he's been making their skin into leather and selling it. It's, of course, all a reference to Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, who first appeared in the Victorian Penny Dreadful. He was coming too close to figuring out where all those people went. <laughs> they got parceled out to the baker, the florist, and me. Les Miserables, Assassin's Creed Unity. One of our informants may have been compromised. She's posing as a scullery maid near Port Saint-Denis. We need you to tail the innkeepers, find out if they suspect her, 
and get her out if she's in danger. There are a handful of references to Le Miserable and the work of Victor Hugo throughout Unity. Right at the beginning of the game, adult Arno is stealing back his father's watch from two brothers named Victor and Hugo. But later, you'll do the cafe theater mission called Colette, which references the character Cosette from the novel. Colette is an assassin informant taken in by two unpleasant innkeepers, just like Cosette. Madame Goose sent me. You are discovered. You need to get out of here. But, as Sean Hastings points out in the Codex, the novel and the musical both take place in the different revolution in the 1830s, not the revolution in the 1790s when the game is set. I much prefer books in libraries to on bonfires, don't you? Sleepy Hollow, Assassin's Creed 3. His whole battalion was routed and they lost the encounter. But the lad didn't die. It's not surprising that Sleepy Hollow is referenced in Creed 3, since it's a real town in New York State founded way back in the 17th century, about a hundred years before the events of the game. The frontiersman will tell Connor the tale about the town's headless horseman, who originates from Washington Irving's famous story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Connor can find one of the horseman's victims and see him right away ominously, but Assassin's Creed Rogue brought this back because you can actually go to Sleepy Hollow yourself, where it's full of pumpkins and permanently Halloween. The horseman sometimes spawns at the church at night and will try to fight Shay. Shoot the graveyard's conspicuous pumpkin to get rid of him quickly. Smack my bishop, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We've all heard the Prodigy 90s rave classic. It's one of the most famous dance songs ever released, and created a controversial but acclaimed music video. And the Prodigy are, of course, from England. So it makes sense that they'd be referenced in Valhalla, kind of. In truth, it's a little weird to stumble across this mystery in the open world, running into the vocalist who's named Keith after Keith Flint, who sadly passed away in 2019 a year before the game came out. The band will sing their song with its tongue-in-cheek lyrics. This mystery can be found in Essex, which is where the band hails from in real life. Ghosts of the Past, Assassin's Creed 2. So that's why you found him. My ancestor. What was his name? Ezio? If you can follow in his footsteps, you'll learn everything he did, just like he did. Ezio's story in Assassin's Creed 2 begins as a tragedy. The auditores are ordered to be executed and only Ezio, Claudia, and their mother Maria survive. The family flees Florence and doesn't return for much of the story, which is why this easter egg was undiscovered for so long. By some accounts, nobody found it until the Bonfire of the Vanities DLC released, which sees Ezio return to his home city. While there, if you visit the Palazzo Auditori, you can briefly encounter, through Eagle Vision, the ghosts of Giovanni, Federico, and Petruccio, Ezio's father and two brothers. He also sees Claudia and Maria, remembering them to be a happy family. Dark Souls, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. From Software took over the gaming world for a few years, and while the Souls-like genre certainly isn't going anywhere, it used to be far more inescapable. Every game out there had to force in a Dark Souls reference, and Assassin's Creed was no exception. Origins, the first game in the series with its revitalized combat and traditional boss fights, referenced the series with a bonfire and sword found in the open world. Three years later, and the same easter egg can also be found in Valhalla, maybe the most Souls-like Assassin's Creed game of all, though it's still way too easy to truly count. Enjoy resting at the bonfire and not replenishing your Estus. Cthulhu Mythos, Assassin's Creed Mirage. If you're not up on your Lovecraft lore, you might have been confused to find the Necronomicon at the other end of a treasure map. 
This unmarked quest to find the final lost book sees you head to some ancient ruins in the far southeastern corner of Mirage's map. There, you'll find papers from a scholar describing slowly going mad as he sees creatures descending from the stars. You'll then find the Necronomicon itself and return it to the House of Wisdom, netting some interesting talismans along the way. The Necronomicon is hiding in 9th century Baghdad because that's where it's supposed to be, according to Lovecraft's own short stories, after being written in Arabia by Abdul al-Hazred. It has many names, I know it as Kitab al-Azim. The Book of the Dead. It is death to all who read it. Transformers, Assassin's Creed. If there's one thing you definitely couldn't find in the 12th century, it was robots in disguise. However, you can find a stone representation of Optimus Prime in the first Assassin's Creed game if you know where to look. There are actually a number of these to find in the game, and chances are you've free run past some of them in your playthroughs. The Optimus Prime Easter eggs are peppered throughout the stone townscape, in the form of strange window structures on the sides of the buildings. This one isn't as impressive or entertaining as some of the others on this list, but shows the nerdy side of the developers, and we love that. Portal, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Do you have the wits to best me? There is cake in it if you do. There's nothing as heartbreaking as being promised cake and not getting any. Fans of the classic game Portal are all too familiar with this feeling, as playable character Chell was promised a sweet reward for all of her hard work, only to be deceived in the end. In AC Valhalla, poor Eivor is subject to the same deception. For cake! I will answer any mind tease you have for me. After being challenged to a battle of the wits by a wandering man, and offered cake as a reward if triumphant, Eivor jumps at the chance. After three correctly answered riddles, the errant riddler reveals that he doesn't have any cake, only to prompt Eivor to reply, So the cake was a lie? Skyrim, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Even those who haven't played Skyrim have heard of taking an arrow to the knee. AC Odyssey found a subtle way to pay homage to the poor former adventurer. There are a seemingly infinite number of randomized mercenaries in the game, each up for a fight. One type of merc you can encounter goes under the title of Knee Destroyer, and his bio says he was once friends with one of the mercenaries on Delos. That is, until the latter was shot in the knee. Now, in memory of his dear friend, this mercenary shoots every one of his opponents in the knee. How... touching? A Cakewalk, Assassin's Creed Unity. Hmm. There's a lot to do in Assassin's Creed Unity, and it's easy to get overwhelmed. On top of all of this, there are some secrets to unearth. In this particular case, Arno can find five elaborate tiered cakes around the map. If he finds and eats all five, don't worry, it won't affect his svelte figure, a secret fight is unlocked in Luxembourg Palace. A statue of the Marquis de Bouillon will come to life, and defeating him will cause a short firework celebration in the skies of Paris, as well as a 50,050 livered prize when his body is looted. It pays to follow the cakes, and in this case, they aren't lies. <laughs> Star Wars, Assassin's Creed Origins. It's over, I have the high ground. Star Wars nerds will appreciate this one. In an AC Origins DLC mission, Bayek fights Gamalot, leader of the Nabataean rebels who oppose the Roman opposition in the Sinai region. Rebels, get it? When Bayek faces his foe Love on that. a platform, Gamalot repeatedly tries to knock him off. If he succeeds, he can be heard to say, Over, Bayek! I have the high ground! This is a nod to the line from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, 
in which Obi-Wan says this to Anakin Skywalker during a similar duel. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! It's safe to say that the Force is strong with Bayek, we think. Goodfellas, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. When you steal from the rich, it's criminal. But stealing from the poor, that's capitalism. Love him or hate him, Jacob Fry is a silly, yet pretty cool guy. He has his serious moments, and this Easter egg is one of them. In the trailer for AC Syndicate, entitled The Twins, Jacob and Evie Fry, Jacob opens with the line, As far back as I can remember, I wanted to be part of London. This is strikingly similar to the opening line of the classic film Goodfellas, in which Ray Liotta's character Henry Hill says, As far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a gangster. And cue Tony Bennett's rags to riches. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. All the Syndicate trailer is missing is Mr. Bennett's dulcet tones. Monkey Island, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. I know the king's bounty on your head is a large one, and I intend to collect. Hey, 90s kids, remember the secret of Monkey Island? Well, the programmers of AC Black Flag certainly did. The 1990s LucasArts computer game featured a protagonist named Guybrush Threepwood, whose ambition was to become a pirate in the Caribbean. He encountered all sorts of characters and puzzles in his journeys. In Black Flag, Edward takes out a pirate captain by the name of Mancomb Seepgood, a name mentioned in the LucasArts game. A line from the old game is also borrowed, as Bartholomew Roberts repeats one of Ghost Pirate LeChuck's utterances. There's nothing like the hot winds of hell blowing in your face. Honestly, thank the Lord Black Flag isn't in a point-and-click format. And withdrawing them, find it better to be a commander than a common man! <laughs> Assassin Turkey, Assassin's Creed 3. Some Easter eggs in the franchise are just bizarre, and feel like the twisted results of a long day of exhausting developer work. These, however, are sometimes some of the best. In AC3, on the grounds of the Davenport homestead, Connor can summon a turkey if he takes cover and whistles. When the turkey appears, if the player is savvy enough to enter the Konami code, the code often used in old Konami video games, Connor will feed the turkey. Upon feasting on the provided meal, the turkey will suddenly acquire a tiny turkey version of an assassin hood. Adorable. Useless, but adorable. Metal Gear. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Come here. Psst, it's you. Over here. In the Metal Gear series, stealth is of dire importance. What is one of the stealthiest methods used by its protagonists then? Why, the ever-innovative cardboard box. Protagonists Solid Snake and Raiden were often masterful users of this genius cloaking device, and AC Brotherhood contains a nod to the stealth box. Kila, it's you. Leonardo. In a scene in which Ezio reunites with Leonardo da Vinci, Ezio finds a cardboard box which is not of his time period, in which the artist momentarily appears to be hidden. There is also a Raiden skin available in the Animus Virtual Training Program, which is a far more direct reference. I want no part of this. <laughs> Giant Squid, Assassin's Creed 2. Beware the giant squid when exploring old tombs. In AC2, Ezio can witness a monstrous squid and dodge its tentacle if the timing is right. In the assassin tomb beneath the Santa Maria della Visigatoni, if Ezio stands next to the first lever for one minute, he will see a giant squid swim by in the murky waters. Should he look down a second time, he will narrowly miss being struck by the creature's giant tentacle. 
Ubisoft developers must be fans of the cephalopod, as the giant squid makes an additional appearance in AC Black Flag during a sunken ship excursion. If Edward looks out the correct porthole of the Antocha wreck, he will see a giant squid in battle with a white whale. Let us know in the comments which of these easter eggs you found. Anyway, take a seat when you're ready, and we can get started. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.